and they mentioned that their mechanic who previously put this car back together or tried to put it back together was now in prison for armed robbery. Most people would have known uh, that my dream car is a Merchel Argo since like the dawn of day, anyway, like yourself. I had a phone call one day from a Trek Experience company and they said, look, we've got a Merchel Argo here, which is in a bit of a state. It was an ex Trek Experience car and like we're looking to sell it. Would you be interested? And I was like, oh, obviously, of course, I'm interested in a Merchel Argo, especially one that I've got the chance to like rebuild because it'll work well with the channel as well. So uh, he invited us down. Yeah, and then he, when we got down there, he mentioned that he actually had two, not one. So we walked around the place and it was full X track. Well, it's a, it is a track experience place, but there's cars there which have been beaten the hell out of and then just left to sit there. They've taken parts off the cars and um, the just sat there for days on end. And uh, this Merchel Argo was sat there for seven years uh, where it had an issue apparently with uh, just a rattly chain, but they've taken a mechanic who worked there previously, has taken the engine out, attempted to fix the rattly chain and just tried to put it back together. And when they put it back together, the engine just went tight. And because he spent so much time on it and they're all about a quick, turnover they want to get the cars back on the track they decided not to carry on with the build because it was just they'd have to take the engine apart all over again so i went to see it i've seen this green one that's the one with the engine out and then they showed me a yellow one which was in a bit better condition but they wanted more money for it uh, at the time i thought it was a brilliant idea to go for the green one which needed more work and that's what i did but he wanted a hundred thousand pounds for uh this green one and I was um and ah about it for a while. And obviously with it being a dream car and not getting another chance for it, I tried to knock him down, but he just wouldn't come down on the price. And then we came on an agreement that I'd pay a hundred thousand pounds if the car was complete. So the deal was I'm paying for the car, but everything is there. So even though the engine has been taken out and all the bolts are everywhere and this, that and the other, as long as everything was there, I'm completely fine with it. And if it wasn't there, then they were gonna pay for it. So uh, we noticed that there was no clutch when we picked up the car and there was no flywheel. They said they will pay for that. Maybe I was too naive at the start, but <laughs> we paid for that. Uh, they said they'll pay for that. There was throttle bodies missing, which we later found out they're a secondhand, at least 1,100 pound each, a throttle body. So yeah, we, we were missing them. But I took it home anyway. I bought the my dream car and it was amazing for a good, day and then the realization of having to rebuild it kicks in when we start rebuilding it and we just found endless amount of things wrong with it the the cam caps on top of the engine even though they're numbered from factory one to 24 even on each single with the cam they were all muddled up so the guy who rebuilt the engine obviously probably couldn't count but <laughs> it was just the simple things and we've never rebuilt a lamborghini engine before and but the mistakes that were made rebuilding that were ones that were just made on it could be made on any car you don't have to be a lamborghini mechanic to know why the cam caps go in order of one to all the way to 24. as we stripped it apart we found the timing was out there was broken piston rings the conrod caps again which were all numbered they were all muddled up uh, there was loads of shortcuts taken and we called the track experience company and we said right what's the whole story with this why has it got to this state and they mentioned that their mechanic who previously put this car back together or tried to put it back together was now in prison for armed robbery. They left the company. I think he got maybe sacked or he left the company and then later, yeah, committed a crime and he's in there for armed robbery, which explains a lot, I guess. Anyway, after rebuilding it, we filmed the whole thing on my channel and the track experience company went completely cold on us about everything we called them asking for like a clutch or a flywheel we never really got anything back we just thought well that's it i've handed the money over there's no chance of me being able to get anything from them uh, we actually heard from them saying that they found some more parts for it one day 
and we went down to their shop and they'd found like a strut bar a, a strut brace which went across the back and they mentioned that some of my followers were messaging the company saying that they're making a petition to get some of my money back because they knew the whole agreement we had nothing to do with it or anything like that and yeah apparently my followers were going after them saying like we couldn't try and get Matt Armstrong some money back and so they said can you call them off so well <laughs> we said well if you help us out which will look good for you then we'll help you out by it will look good for you if they're helping us out people will then see the track experience company in a good light but again nothing really ever happened of it and we carried on rebuilding the car and we got finally to almost the last stages of rebuilding it just the other week and we had to call for help from a guy called Sonny at BHP in London he's a Mercer Largo specialist and I called him and then he goes oh I know the history of this car the chap at that track experience place he put that together completely a different mechanic to what they were telling us but this guy who's supposedly in prison he was saying another mechanic put it together and yeah it just didn't run at all and when the car's been dropped off to Sonny for him to work on apparently a previous bill wasn't paid so he refused to work on it and yeah he said it, the whole car is a mess and you don't know how many miles has actually been on it we still don't know to the day how many miles are on it because the instrument cluster that was completely gone because they'd jumped to the car the wrong way around with um, the battery terminal so we had to get a new instrument cluster as well and with a new instrument cluster just reset the mileage back to zero so we still have no idea how many miles the cars are actually gone the last mileage check we did on the car on the it said 75,000 miles so that's the last MOT when it was on the road and that was 2011 maybe so it's probably done 75,000 miles in 2011 we don't know from then how long it's it was on the track for or anything like that and we'll, we won't know unless we got the original clocks working and the original clocks are fried we've tried so many people to try and to get them to work and no one everyone says well even if you do get them to work the whole memory would have just lost in the clocks because everything's been short circuited inside so we don't know like it could have done way over a hundred thousand miles or it might have been seventy five thousand miles and then stopped we honestly don't know but it doesn't look too bad it just looks like it's sat there for a while but again as you said the most loggers like to be driven so it's probably done it a fairly good job it has been driven around the track a lot but we found loads of different things i mean the the fan on the back was wired so it was constantly on to keep it cool around the track so there's just some speaker wire holding straight to the positive cable on the battery and then just grounding it out so the the fan is constantly on so it's obviously had a hard life the car was wrapped we peeled the wrap off the car to find that the whole car had been wet sanded and the passenger side door was just full primered and we later found some videos online of the Mercer Largo on a track day with a huge dent in the side of the door. Uh, a lot of people messaging his stories saying that, oh yeah, it got put into a tree or someone's drove into it. There's so many different stories of it. And apparently the car got wrapped as part of a show in England for some company who wanted to promote their wrapping. So. Yeah, so they must have known that the car was like that underneath. Another thing we found, which was quite funny, it did come with a gearbox. Obviously, it's been a manual car, that, why I wanted it. Before we put the gearbox back in the car, we decided to strip the gearbox apart just to check everything worked. And then later found there was a few extra holes in the gearbox, which we had nothing to put into. Uh, we found that the gearbox was actually from an e-gear car. So we think... The car is a manual on, like on when you check the VIN out and everything like that, but we think the gearbox may have blown at some point and then instead of getting a manual box, they put an e-gear box onto it and converted it to manual. And these holes in the gearbox were for sensors, which are for the e-gear. So they've just plugged them up. Also with that, because they have converted it from e-gear to manual, when you put the gearbox into a Mercer Largo and the engine in, it all has to go in in one go. They've all put it in and then to adjust the gear stick to get it sitting right in the center of the gated manual part, there's a adjuster for the gear linkage a little bit further down the gearbox. We found another way of doing this instead of doing this option that they chose to take, 
But the option they chose to take was cut a hole in the transmission tunnel, which we've seen actually Hoover's garage do on an e-gear. But they've cut this hole out. It, it's not the neatest of holes at all. And uh, yeah, they've adjusted it that way and uh, put it on. But whilst they were drilling the hole, they also must have got a really long drill bit, drilled straight through the transmission tunnel and almost drilled through the gearbox. There is about four marks in the gearbox, which uh, was so close to going through the gearbox. But I guess it all tells a story, the car does. And for that reason, and that reason alone, because we put so much work into it, I'm never gonna sell it. It's <laughs> It's got character, it's got personality. We rebuilt it ourselves. And now we're about to attempt to do a 3000 mile trip on Gumball with it. And if it makes it, it'll, it'd be even more special to me. But if it doesn't, there's no hard feelings. We'll, re we'll rebuild it again. <laughs> it took us a while to get a, a clutch in the car. We upgraded the clutch and yeah, it took us a while to bleed it, get it in gear. But the first time I've ever driven a Mercia Largo in my entire life was my one. And because the car's not road legal yet, we only got to drive around the car park of the unit. I got it into second gear. And uh, <laughs> that was about it. We realized straight the way the brakes, the steel brakes on it, do not stop that car. They, it, it, you have to really stand on them with your whole body weight, body weight and it really doesn't stop it. But yeah, that's the first time I ever drove one. And yeah, it was a really good, really good moment. The sound of it's incredible. We put an exhaust on it, obviously. But no, I can't wait to drive it properly. The first time driving it probably will be the gumball. So yeah. <laughs> Car fires make for great videos, but very bad days for car owners. And I protect my cars from fire by having an element extinguisher in every one of them for every mile. I actually got my first one from Freddie a few years ago as we were shooting Car Trek 1, where a fire was a very real risk, but it's always important to be protected. Element fire extinguishers weigh less than a tenth of what a traditional fire extinguisher weighs, and they discharge five times longer. They also make no mess, and they never expire. So it's worth picking up a few to have around the garage, your house, and of course, in your car. They've got a special bundle offer right now during the month of May for our VinWiki viewers, but it's always a good time to buy a couple of these to keep you, your car, and your home safe. So check them out now at the link in the description below.